are a number of compelling reasons to catch the looming March 13th to 14th total lunar eclipse, which will be visible in the entire lower 48 states and greater Americas. Total lunar eclipses occur when the Sun, Earth and Moon are in alignment, allowing Earth to cast a shadow on the Moon and block most sunlight from reaching the lunar surface. But our planet's atmosphere still allows red wavelengths of light to squeeze through, illuminating the Moon in reddish, rusty, orangish or crimson colors. Crucially, both the fickle conditions in Earth's atmosphere and how deeply the moon passes through Earth's shadow impact how light is ultimately projected onto the moon. This means different and even unexpected light shows. It's part of the thrill. You don't know exactly what you're going to get. Totality, meaning when the moon is totally within Earth's shadow, will begin at 11.26 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time on March 13th, 2025, 2.26 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time on March 14th, lasting for 65 minutes. And the reddening progresses over hours as the moon gradually moves into the Earth's shadow. Technically, the eclipse starts with slight dimming on March 13th at 8.57 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, 11.57 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 03.57. Coordinated Universal Time. So, weather permitting, you will have ample opportunity to see these bloody colors in action. The first major factor at play in the amount of light and coloration illuminated on the moon is what's transpiring in our atmosphere, as sunlight must pass through our skies. Dust and clouds can affect the ultimate color of the moon during this event, which means that each total lunar eclipse ends up being somewhat unique and ultimately reflective of the state of our own planet's weather. For example, if there's lots of dust in the atmosphere, such as expansive dust clouds from the Sahara Desert, you'll generally get a redder eclipsed moon. Storms play a role in impacting how the penetrating light hits the moon too. And volcanic eruptions, which can blast prodigious amounts of ash and gas high into the atmosphere, can dim lunar eclipses as volcanic particles impede light that would otherwise get refracted towards the moon. It can be quite surprising. The other significant player in the moon's illumination is how far the moon travels into Earth's shadow called the umbra, and visualized in this short NASA video. When passing closer to the shadow's center, the moon is illuminated with the darkest colors to deep browns and even purples. When passing nearer to the shadow's edge, the moon is illuminated with rusty orange colors. The coming March 2025 eclipse, then, may be more on the rusty spectrum. But the moon won't be all the same color. Our expansive natural satellite, some 2,159 miles across, will be illuminated by different parts of Earth's shadow, meaning it will display some of those darker colors, as well as the lighter rusty colors. That's one of the cool things about this eclipse. You see the color gradient. Witnessing totality will mean a late night or early morning for many of us, but astronomers emphasizes it's worth it. It'll be a one-of-a-kind space light show, and you don't know exactly what you're going to get. It can be quite surprising. <laughs>